El Zorro Plateador and the Zorro Institute for Masculine Studies presents Anti-Dumps Machine, the classic pickup guide to vetting women and finding love. Presented by El Zorro Plateador in the fall of 2019. Introduction The year was 2003. A lone website with a singular purpose bustled with activity in its online forums. Hundreds of posts were written daily, some by complete beginners in the topic, others by its masters. The website was SoSuave.net, an internet forum whose singular purpose was to understand and have sex with women. The mission of the SoSuave forum was to share with its users sound advice, thousands of tips, and dating experiences that honed each other's skills. Words numbering in the billions ricocheted this way and that throughout the electronic web connecting its members. But the shallow topic of simply bedding women had collectively begun to grow stale, and some of its members were losing their way. It was then that two seasoned masters, two elusive men, one named Pook and the other Antidump, began to dig deeper. They had excelled beyond the mere ability to attract, chat up, and bed women, and so they began to go after the big one. They began searching for love. It is no small irony that this group of pickup artists, infamous for their questionable tactics of persuading, manipulating, and love-making, had begun in this way, like the gallant knights of King Arthur's round table, to search for their holy grail, a woman to love who would, in turn, love them back. These two pickup craftsmen, Pook and Andy Dump, worked in unison to piece together a technique, a system, a pattern, a formula, a machine that would deliver men what they wanted, this love of a woman. In October of that year, 2003, Pook collected the many posts that his colleague Auntie Dump had written on this vexing and timeless topic into a series of posts now considered classic texts in the manosphere and the craft of pickup. What it contains is Pook presenting the work of Antidump along with his own responses and comments, as well as the many questions and posts of several other pickup craftsmen active on So Suave at that time. This is the work we will hear today, Antidump's machine, and the purpose of this machine is to deliver you love from an affectionate, compatible woman. As you'll find out, its function is all about boundaries, building them early, identifying the women who will honor them, and rewarding those that do with the attention of the presumably high-value man who erected those boundaries. Everything these men will talk about refers simply to power within their relationships, control over themselves, yet with love as the uniting force lying continually in the background. A crucial theme you'll hear these masters refer to is that of the Don Juan. When a young man begins in the world of pickup, he starts out clumsy. But as he progresses and his confidence builds, and perhaps after a long period of incubation, this awkward and naive youth can transform himself into a person everyone else needs around. The Don Juan. A man, a player, a seducer of incredible magnetism, a delightful, charismatic, and amusing character who everyone nearby finds seductive, smooth, debonair, irresistible. This is the end state of the pickup artist, to become so effortless and fluid with women that all the work becomes play. You'll note now that these masters understand that the Don Juan archetype is also on a quest for love, just as are they. The structure of this work, like all reliable machines, is linear and logical. It begins with what Antidump refers to as the law of interest, in which he divides a woman's interest level, in other words, her curiosity and desire for you, into three strengths. 
He then goes into states of mind that a pickup artist needs when engaging with possible love interests, including constraining one's own ego and being socially fearless. He then goes into ways to approach women and how to sustain a woman's interest via the law of mystery. He covers several contingencies when dating new candidates, and then he covers what to do after the initial getting-to-know-you phase has finished. You'll hear within this work the forum commenters refer to two relationship books important at that time. The first is Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, a practical guide for improving communication and getting what you want in your relationships by a man named Dr. John Gray. This is a book he wrote in 1992 about relationships and the gender-specific traits in which men and women differ. The second book is The Rules, Time-Tested Secrets for Capturing the Heart of Mr. Wright, written by two women, Ellen Fine and Sherry Schneider, in 1995. This controversial book presented guidelines for women in the process of vetting men and gaining reasonable amounts of control over their relationships. These two books still exist and are worthy of your cursory investigation. They continue to hold up over time, and should you be curious about them, I encourage you to give them a look. These pickup artists began a dangerous search. The men active on So Suave struggled with objectifying women for sex, while also pedestalizing the idea that a man can find a single unique match for himself, a fine woman they called the One. In the manosphere today, the myth of the One bears forth an incredible infectious disease called oneitis, in which its victims undergo an emotional free fall after being refused by the woman he saw as his One. This means that this very concept, that of anti-dumps machine helping men find their One, is itself troubling because it can bear forth and trigger this deeply toxic emotional tailspin. But this machine is soundly engineered and has a built-in safety mechanism to prevent this oneitis. A system of ruthlessly and immediately weeding out women who are disinterested, apathetic, indifferent about their suitors. This machine was built during a time before the rampant and ubiquitous use of texting and social media. It was made when phone calls were the usual way to communicate. So we must wonder, is this machine still useful? And if so, how? As we experience Anti-Dumps Machine, let us think about the following questions. How has this information aged? How do we fit this machine into today's world, into this current madness of social media and dating sites, into the ubiquity of internet-connected smartphones, into the wildly destabilized dynamics of gender, and into today's incredibly toxic political landscape? I'll let you, while you listen, be the judge of all that, but note Though these posts were written during a simpler time, the great quest of these men, that of finding a quality woman who loves you, one whose love you can return, still remains. Chapter 1. Interest Level Before the posts of Antidump slip away forever, there ought to be a recollection of what he said. The length of these posts is to provide a summary and quotes of Antidump's machine. You follow the same procedure time and time again with all women. This will almost guarantee you success in finding an interested woman, because it is like having a love machine. Just push a button, and there she is. Well, there's more work than that, but you get the picture. Now you're on the road to the one. This is Anti-Dump's machine. Anti-Dump was interested in filtering out the non-interested chicks and finding the one he wanted. This is why Anti-Dump was not other men on this forum, who were interested in boosting a female's interest level through challenge and such. 
Anti-Dump wasn't interested in boosting women's interest levels. He only wanted a chick for himself. This machine was not to make women interested. It was to separate the wheat from the chaff. Anti-Dump's machine is not everything. You still must build yourself up and create a life. Anti-Dump's machine is a good system to find an interested chick and keep her for a long-term relationship and eventual marriage. For example, if a girl goes back to her ex, most guys think the chick is broken. Anti-Dump would see it as a dump. But does the guy see it as a dump? No, his vanity is in the way. He and the other guys just conclude the women are broken or mad. If this guy had used Anti-Dump's machine, he would never have been in such a situation. In other words, girls are not crazy. You just weren't man enough for her. How do I measure success with women? That's easy. Interest level. I only date women who are interested in me. I think I'm very successful because I don't have women around me who aren't interested. Most guys get a girlfriend and get that stupid smug look on their face. I got a girlfriend. But does she like you or is she really just bored? Anyone can get a woman. Remember, average frustrated chumps can get women. Pleasing them cannot be the barometer of success. Pleasing yourself is what you want. This also applies to the urban breed of men who get together with their friends to tell how many chicks they've scored. Just like chirpy chicks telling each other how much they've gotten from a guy. When we play this game, we just go in a circle, boosting nothing in our lives but vanity. I'm successful because I don't have women in my life that don't love me. This is not a negative attitude. It is a weeding out process. I weed out unsuitable women. What's unsuitable? Low interest. Why is she with me if she rejects almost all of my date suggestions? Low interest. Why is she with me when, after three years, she never once said, How are you? Low interest. Why is she with me when we're engaged to be married in four weeks, and I hear her say, in a serious voice to her girlfriend while on the phone, Man, they're just not worth it. Low interest. These are actual real women I've dated, and I didn't even mention my ex-wife, who wasn't the engaged girl above, by the way. Gentlemen, they don't love you, so dump them. You know it's true. But you hang in there year after year, pretending her love's really there. But it isn't. She just doesn't treat you right. You can laugh at my stuff and anybody else, but I guarantee you you'll meet a woman who loves you, and not one that doesn't. Anti-Dump and Interest Level Say you asked Anti-Dump, What should I do to please the women? He would reply, what? Please the women? Stop looking from the perspective of the woman and start looking at what pleases you. This is where most guys get anti-dump wrong. These guys, these speed seductionists, keep trying to create romantic interest. I'll give the woman a chance to get to know me. Anti-dump isn't trying to create interest because it already has to be there. This confuses many. Let us say a cool guy uses anti-dump's machine and finds a girl that loves him. Now let us say a bum on the street uses it too, yet finds no girl that loves him. See, see, his machine doesn't work. Fool, you're placing the success on obtaining any woman, not on obtaining an interested woman. It is not a black and white world of the successful have women and the failures stay single. No, it is the successful remain free of indifferent women, and the failures shackle themselves to one uninterested woman. Being in an unhappy marriage is worse than being single. In both the cool guy and the bum's examples above, 
Anti-Dump's machine actually worked. The purpose of the machine is not to get you a woman. Its purpose is to weed out apathetic women. If you are the street bum, no woman will be interested in you. The machine, therefore, is not the failure. The man is. Now, if the street bum recreated himself and became the cool guy, the machine will throw up an interested woman eventually. It is that simple. A woman should be interested in you, not in what you're doing. When a woman changes the date, this is a red flag. Think about it. She's negotiating a simple date. What other demands is she going to insist upon in the future? I was once engaged to a girl who turned down ten second date ideas. I swear to God, she was one of the most inflexible girls I had ever had a relationship with. We were going to be married, and she refused to spend Sundays anywhere but at her mother's house. No exceptions. And she hated Boston. I love Boston. My second date idea should have been to go to Boston. I'd have gotten rid of it then and not later. You tell her, I was looking forward to playing pool with you. I'll give you another buzz sometime. You pick the dates you want at first. She needs to like your style. Call a week later with a different date, not the one she said. Remember, you're testing her for high interest. If she doesn't accept the second one, throw her number away. What I'd say for the second turn down is, Wow, we really seem to be as different as night and day. Listen, maybe I'll see you around town. Goodbye. Your first date should be accepted, and the second and the third as well. After that, you can compromise. Another way is the counteroffer. Let's go skydiving. I'll pick you up at 1 p.m. on Saturday. Oh, God, I could never jump out of a plane. How about a simple dinner? Sorry, but I just lost ten pounds. How about jet skiing? There is his counteroffer. My uncle will let me use his jet skis. I'll be over at 3 p.m. I'm afraid of falling off the darn thing. Maybe down the road we can get together. I've got to go. And then you hang up. The whole point is that if she accepts your first three dates, she's going to be a flexible partner down the road. Women that feel that every date has to be mutual are bad news in my book. I called one girl years ago for a movie date, and she said, I have to be in the mood for a movie. Today I'd say, listen, I'll call you back when you're in the mood. Like never. Stand your ground. It shows you're not desperate and that you're a man, that you have backbone. It weeds out the ones that just want to use you for a good time or are going with you because they're bored. You must be the focus. Exactly. You are the focus, not the girl. She must like who you are, not want to mold you to her pleasures. You guys are not creating interest. You're just deceiving yourself. Why do people deceive themselves? Because it flatters their ego. For a strategy to work, one of the sexes can't be using a strategy. Again, for a strategy to work, one of the sexes can't be using a strategy. One side must be defenseless for the strategy side to win. One side must be defenseless for the strategy side to win. A man who is a nice guy will call a woman repeatedly because, in the book The Rules, she won't return a man's calls. In other words, the guy must beg for a date. But real men don't beg. Begging is impossible with my strategy because of the two-call limit. You're not defenseless. If the both of you use a strategy, as in chess, you'll have a stalemate. Both of you lose the game. The answer is simple. Only date women who use no plan. Here's the great part. Women dislike strategies. The moment they meet a guy in whom they have high interest, they are the first to break their own rules. This is why you should never make an exception. The woman must be the first to compromise a little. Women who at first won't let the man lead are scared of being women. You need to avoid them.
Almost every guy on the planet shows excessive attention to a woman. This goes on day after day, year after year. Women are utterly bored with it. They've heard the compliments a million times. You believe a myth. You believe a woman doesn't get enough attention. You believe she is starved for attention. This is not so. Every day some guy is asking her to get together sometime. Every day some guy is asking for her number. Every day some guy is telling her how beautiful she is. When you show a woman initial interest, like you said earlier, she begins to lose interest. Your theory would work if nobody was approaching these women day after day. Then her interest would suddenly increase. But instead it decreases when you tell her how beautiful she looks and talks. She's bored by attention. So, in effect, there can be no cycle. Attention kills the deal. It might work on an unattractive lady, I'll give you that. But on attractive and beautiful women, your attention backfires. It is as if the dog women want to be treated like beauties, with flowers and chocolates, while the beautiful women want to be treated like dogs, neglected, hurt, kicked. Stop being sappy, not because it won't get you the hot chicks, but because it is so disrespectful to yourself. You start awarding flowers to women who've not earned them. The Don Juan way is not trickery, just like you said. You see this so clearly. It's uncommon common sense. Sure, you could use it to build high interest, make love to the girl, and then drop her the next day. But this is unlikely. Guys that use these methods, the machine, are interested in love, not just sex. We don't have short attention spans, except with blasé women. It's funny how some say that the way of the Don Juan is immoral. If a girl is not interested in us, we don't get sex first, like he does, then later drop the girl. We drop the girl long before any sex. It's immoral for guys to be played as suckers. That's immoral. It's immoral for guys to be used by the ladies who accept gifts and free concerts from guys for whom they care little. I would also add sex and boy toys. Oh yes, women do use guys as sex toys. You want to stay away from such trollops because it's impossible to have a healthy relationship with them. A woman ought to be giving, not taking. To sum up now, after a while you peel off the anti-dump machine cover. That's exactly it. Dating is like buying an expensive piece of real estate. You have to know what you're doing. You have to be careful, or you might get stuck with Swampland. Chapter 2. More Interest Level Let us say you set up a date, and the woman does not like your date idea. Heavens no! What should we say to her, Auntie Dump? It doesn't matter what you say. You'll never speak to her again. I tell them, Sorry, I'm not interested. Take care. And then I hang up. Any time a woman wants to change your initial approach, just counter with, I'm not interested, and then counter offer. Let's do dinner Saturday. I feel like bowling. I'm not interested in bowling. Let's do pool. Remember, this is only for the first and second date, and it's a test of interest to see if she follows your lead the second time. If she doesn't follow with the second request, tell her, Listen, let's do this another time. Take care. And then don't call back. She's too inflexible to date. But what if she asks for a confirmation or something? Sure, I'd like to go out, but could you call me that day, a few hours before, to confirm? The writer Don Steele, author of several dating books, answered this. Tell her, maybe we should get together some other time instead when you're able to be more certain of your schedule. Because when you let her do that to you, she's playing you, taking you for granted, and looking for a way to blow you off at the last minute. And that's awful. I've been there and done that. However, I view what she did as a test of the steel contents of your balls. Women have to find out if you're a boy or a man, capable of protecting and providing. If you're a boy, 
she's immediately disinterested in sending her DNA into the future with you. I teach and preach that men have to accept that ladies will test them. Don't assume that she's a game player or taking you for granted. Assume she's interested and therefore she's testing to see if you're worthy. Boys aren't. Men might be. There will be more tests, and after that still more tests. Forum commenter Bond, James Bond, comments with the following. Speaking for myself, I never had a problem with confirmation calls. I used to do it all the time. But it was always me who said I'd call, about a day or so ahead of time, to make certain things were still on. It was my own little test. If they acted even the least bit half-hearted or wanted to back out, I dropped him like a bad habit and never gave him a second thought again. Only once did I excuse a chick for being unable to show. She had to go to the hospital because of an attack of appendicitis, so things do happen. I can't tell you the number of times some broads would call me again and again trying to set something back up after I felt they burned me. But they all got the same response. Silence. But I think a confirmation call can be reasonable within certain limits, ones you set. But don't ever break rule number one. Never kiss a woman's ass. Now let us observe a conversation between Auntie Dump and the nice guy. The nice guy cannot understand why his girlfriend, who he thought to be a good girl, went back to her ex. The only thing you're reckless about is your manly pride. You have been dumped, and you don't see it. Now her old boyfriend wants her back, and she has decided to give it one more try. That, my friend, is a dump. You're out of her romantic life forever. When a woman goes back to her boyfriend, she has decided you're not for her. She has tasted your flavor and has low interest, romantically speaking, for you. It's low. She could come back, but she'll break up with you again, because romantically, her interest just isn't there. Uh, I guess I kind of understand. Only confused, clueless, no-balls nice guys understand a girl dumping him and going back with an ex. Young man, you came to the right place. We'll make a Don Juan out of you yet. The problem I have is she still likes me, but wants us to just be friends. Yes, she likes you a little. But that's not good enough for a Don Juan. She has to be crazy about you. She has to want to marry you. In short, she has to have high interest. I'm wondering if her ex came back on the scene because he suddenly realized that he wasn't the only one that could have her. Doesn't matter. When she decided to go back, she revealed her low interest in you. It wasn't an easy decision for her, crying about it and all that. This is where the nice guy completely fails. It was easy for her to dump you. She has ten times the romantic feelings for her ex than for you. It was easy. The hard part was hurting you. She knows she cares little for you. She knows she started something with you she can never finish. She didn't cry for you. She's not torn between you and her ex. She cried because she's dumping you. You nice guys need a lot of work. Remember, I used to be in your shoes. My question is, how do I get her to realize that her old boyfriend will just mess around with her? Why do you care? She'll never be your girlfriend. Once a woman leaves you, romantically, you're out forever. No chance. Okay, well, how do I get out of this friend zone? Impossible. It's over, friend. She's giving you false hope. Remember, she'll dump you again if you get back together because of her low interest. She even told me the other day that I was making her horny. Oh, she's randy. She's randy because her ex isn't around to please her. If she wanted it from you, she would have ripped your clothes off. Six months is a long time to wait, yet she didn't ask you to bang her. That's a bad sign. She is confused, but what can I do? She is not confused. Nice guys like you get it all wrong. She wants her ex, not you. That is confused? I don't think so. 
Do I ignore her totally? Oh, that'll be hard. And lose her friendship or keep up the innuendo in hopes that she may come back? Turn her into a friend, but get out there and start asking other girls for numbers. Don't let her give you false hope again. Don't get sucked back in. Date other women. Does this sound familiar? Perhaps this has happened to you. The girl was just stringing him along to make her ex jealous. Oh yes, women do use guys like this. Forum commenter Peek adds this. Okay guys, Andy Dump once said this off the cuff, like in one of his posts, and I thought it needed to be painted into the sky so we could all look up and remember it. Stop looking for a green light to move ahead. Never look for signs of her liking you. You'll never get into a woman's head, so don't even try. Stop trying to read women. It's a waste of time. Ask her out. Then you'll know for sure. Her actions are something you can get a handle on. A smile and a friendly look is all you need to make your approach. You ask me if this is really true? Look, learn from my mistakes. In the past, I had girls that really liked me for ages before I had the guts to ask them out. Their response was over the moon when I finally did. I had absolutely no idea that so many girls actually liked me. Yes, in that warm and gooey, wet kind of way. I was really clueless. But not anymore. As Forum Commenter Peak said in his very first post, stop overthinking it. Men are not women. Take off the dress, guys. It is women that wonder if a guy likes them before anything happens. Men have somehow picked up this bad habit from women. The thought of whether she likes you should never cross your mind. This isn't important before you ask for the number. The important thing is you wanting her. Always ask yourself, do I want this one? And the answer should be, oh, by the queen I do. And that is all you need to know. Real men take what they want and ask questions later. Chapter 3. You buy a relationship, not build one. Antidump says that the guy who goes into a relationship with no guidelines of what he wants ends up with a girl doing things he didn't want. Understand, you don't build relationships, you buy them. This is the key. Always buy a relationship, never build it. This means when you first meet a woman, she has to already display potential for being a partner. Take computers, for example. You could build one yourself, using what are called kits. Very few people have the desire and the patience to build their own computer. But that's what most guys try to do in their relationships. They try to build them, with talk, kindness, gifts and flowers. All the while, the woman is not the sort of woman who should be in a relationship. A woman who is not relationship-worthy will think nothing of dating you. She thinks she has every right to, even though she's demented. When you buy a car, you don't try to install into it a different transmission. You don't put on the tires of a monster truck. You buy it the way you want it to be. If it's not right, you don't buy it at all. If your girlfriend is not acting like you think she should, it's because you didn't buy a relationship. You thought you were smarter than the Dawn Juan, who chose the right one in the first place. Once my pukish brother searched for a wife, a woman he could settle down with, he started to pick and choose the women he wanted. With them, he would practically interview them. Is she right for me? He would wonder. Rather than thinking, am I good enough for her? He even gave out specifications on what he wanted in a relationship. For example, he specified how often he expected sex. At least twice a week, he said. And she agreed. Later on, he told me, maybe I should have pushed for three times a week. What this shows is how he bought his relationship. He laid down certain things he expected and was even candid and upfront about them. A guy with no guidelines of how he wants things ends up getting dumped and burned. Love is not like a courtroom. Women are all guilty of non-interest until they prove it to you by showing consistently good behavior. 
Otherwise, you do not connect. No excuses, no cancellations, no runarounds. No, I'm not ready for a relationship. No, give me time. Love the way you want it, or they must be weeded out. Love the way you want it. Sounds great, doesn't it? Get used to this, Don Juan. Grow a backbone today. It's no to bringing a friend along for the date. It's no to rude behavior. It's no to I have to check my schedule. It's no to give me your number. You lead, they follow, for the first few months at least. Then you can get mutual if you choose. That's if you choose. Protect the only part of your body that loves you, your heart. Forum commenter Relapse responded to this with his story. It's long but very crystallizing. It makes the point I've been trying to hammer for years. Funny you should make a post like this today, Auntie Dump. I was thinking of posting a personal testimonial and what you stated relates to that. Synchronicity everywhere I look some days. A while back, I posted about my fiancé breaking off our engagement. That was four months ago. We're talking now, trying to be friends. That may make some of you guys pissed at me, but she's the first girl I ever had sex with, so it's important to me to keep on good terms with her. Enough said about that. But I'm getting decent feedback now on what I was doing right and what I was doing wrong. From someone who really knew me, probably too well. That in itself is really valuable. What she told me is that in the beginning of our relationship, she wasn't even sure if I wanted a girlfriend. She said I seemed cold, which I suppose could be interpreted as seeming distant or mysterious in some ways. At that time in my life, I was doing karate, doing great in school, doing well in dealing with some personal issues, and I guess I just radiated confidence. As time went by in our relationship, I became less secure, less confident, and in the end, she broke me heart. She fucked up. But I also allowed myself to be hurt. I wasn't protective of my heart. He didn't protect his heart. This is the reason why you can do all the things right in attracting the women, but still lose. Critiques on Antidump and his machine about how he didn't focus on the attracting part totally miss the point Antidump is making. Anyone can attract women. I was attracting women even when I was a nice guy. You can attract women all day long, but still get nowhere. You must filter them out. As long as I've been on these forums, I haven't seen anyone make the same points that Antidump makes. Now, listen to what forum commenter Relapse says next. We were close throughout most of our relationship, set at the end, of course. All along we had sex. But you know what? In the beginning, when she thought I was somewhat cold and didn't want a girlfriend... We had sex a lot. We talked and shared, of course, and that felt good. But we had sex a lot, and I got many back rubs. She was warmer to me in the beginning when she thought she had to work to keep me. I got more of what I wanted when she wasn't sure if I was interested or not. When she found out she had me no matter what, that was about the time when things went downhill. Now that I'm talking with her again and hearing what she was feeling and thinking throughout the course of our relationship, I see she held back quite a bit of herself, and I realize how a surprising amount of what I read here about women is true. It doesn't matter how special she is or how much she loves you. She's still a woman, and women have to have certain things in a man to remain interested in him. Now listen very carefully to the following. So I guess the moral of the story is this. Be confident. Be satisfied with yourself. Be patient. Wait for what you want. Be independent, not desperate. Keep improving yourself. Keep growing. Keep broadening your horizons. Keep trying new things. So you've always got something exciting about you that's mysterious. Don't implicitly trust anyone. Trust is earned. It's not given. Respect women, but don't tolerate being disrespected either. Call people out on a bullshit, both women and men. Or get them out of your life and laugh as you walk away. You should probably do both anyway. If someone hurts you, milk your pain for its lessons and move on as best you can. If you must grieve, then do so, but don't wallow in it. 
I'm starting to think the most important way to maintain a woman's interest level is by improving yourself and respecting yourself first. Improve yourself and respect yourself first. Where have we seen that before? Some guys are scared of relationships, but the point is that if you're growing constantly, constantly improving, constantly living, then you'll never become boring. You'll always remain mysterious, and you'll always stay interesting to her. Antidump makes this point again to forum commenter Relapse. As soon as she knew you really loved her, her mission was over. Women are love seekers. As long as they are looking for love in you, they will hang in there. But as soon as they find it, they are off with another bloke to start the process over again. They must never really be sure, as you found out. Say I love you rarely in the future. Make the woman work to get you. This doesn't mean becoming passive or disinterested. It means going on with your life, and if she wants to come along, fine. But you have some ground rules. If she's inconsistent, then she's gone. Chapter 4 Embrace Action Woman's Weak Spot You call only after four days, minimum. Furthermore, your only calling days are Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Never call Thursday through Sunday. She'll have made plans for the weekend by then. Trips, aunts flying in, etc. This is quite simple. If you get a number on one of your calling days, call the following week. If you get a number on Thursday through Saturday, you call the following week. If you get a number on Sunday, call Wednesday. Wednesday is only three days away in this instance, but you probably won't get many numbers on that day. This is not a science. It is an art. Planning your calls is good for you because it teaches you to slow down. The slower you are in dating, the easier it is to avoid the traps. You know the saying, only fools rush in. The girl will wait if she truly likes you. If she gets angry, this is good. You'll find out who is a bitch and who is not. About getting off the phone fast, be mindful your purpose for calling is not to have a conversation. It is to set up a date. Say, this is Antonio. We met at Joe's pub. Let's do dinner on Saturday. I'll pick you up at eight o'clock. What's your address? After she gives you her address, say, that's great. See you Saturday. Good night. And hang up. You're not being rude. You're giving her a date, and she's lucky she got one with you. Why? Because you had two other girls to choose from. A guy told Auntie Dump that he talked to his ex through the internet. Since we broke up so well, maybe there's a chance we'll get back together. And Auntie Dump responded, You said she broke up with me. You were dumped. No matter what you say or learn, you have been put in a little file box in her head, filed under loser. Never forget that. Nothing on the face of the earth can help you now. With her, that is. You need a new girl with a blank file box. March forward, young Don Juan. Seek out new blood. That next girl will be all over you. But the guy replied, But Auntie Dump, she tells me to call her sometime. And Auntie Dump thunders. You said, what about her talking to me? Computer talk is just talk. It is not a relationship. She prefers just to talk to you. Though she could pick up her phone at any second, she never will. Why? You are giving her all the attention she needs. Why should she call you? She can get what she wants from you every day. She knows how to have it all her way. She dumped you when she wanted. She keeps telling you, ordering you, to call. She thinks, incorrectly, you'll do whatever she wants. You see she won't call because she's influenced by her little file box. It tells her you're willing to go along with her. A relationship has to be 50-50. A lot of women think equality means having it all their way. Wrong. Prove me wrong. Call her and ask her out. I guarantee she'll be twice as one-sided as she was before. 
Why? Because you've shown her that you're a willing victim. You're willing to give her your Don Juan time. If you want to be friends, that's all right. Just don't think she'll suddenly turn into miscooperation. It'll never happen. She's not interested in you, the person. If she was, your phone would be exploding. She sees the new you. She talks to the new you. But is your phone ringing? She doesn't know you've changed. But you can't tell her you've changed. You can't tell her about all the things you now know. It's too late. She'll always see you in the old way. But another guy asks, Can this guy get back together with such an axe? I guess you're going to have to learn the hard way. She's baiting her trap. She can't wait to suck you back into a one-sided relationship where she has all the power. Remember her little file box. In her mind, you're a loser. As soon as she allows you back in, she'll dump you harder than you've ever been dumped before. I wonder, why didn't she ask you to be alone with her at the movies? You were only asked to come along, her second choice. Why didn't she ask you to go shopping with her alone? Because none of her friends would go with her. Again, you're the second choice. She'll only put back round your neck her little jewel-encrusted dog collar. What size are you, by the way? Forum commenter Christner adds, As hard as it may sound, in my experience, this is absolutely true. Exes must remain exes. If you go back to them or let them get back with you, it might work for a while and you can have some fun, but it wouldn't last. While I found it easy to become best friends with your exes, with no sex, by the way, it's almost impossible to have a successful relationship with them. Why? Because you already tried it and it didn't work. You can try it again, but again it'll fail because both of you didn't really change and everything that was wrong is still wrong. Your best option is to learn your lesson and let her learn hers and move on. Oh, and one more thing. If you don't really care about what's going on with her, then don't allow her to get any closer because you'll lose control, start caring, and then again get hurt. Forum commenter Poet put out a long post detailing the Don Juan way. At the end, he asks, Does anyone else have a better way to put it, and in less words? Anti-Dump replies, Yes, I have one. When you're talking to a woman, just focus on the single word, number. And then, when you call to ask for a date... Focus on the single word, yes. You will only need these two words, poet. Number and yes. This may be too simple for a brain like you. And please, don't pull out any insults. I'm joking. Forget words. Take action. Forum commenter poet replied he ought to check for high levels of interest signs first. Listen to Auntie Dump's response. I keep telling you that signs are unreliable and looking for them is a waste of your time. Women hide their true feelings. They conceal them until they are absolutely sure. This process takes months and months in a relationship, and you want them to show it before? This will never happen. The ugly ones do it because they're desperate. The nines and tens never do it, generally speaking. You can't get into a woman's head early in the dating process. It's a sealed vault. You must strike women at their weak spot, and their weak spot is action. You see, women rule communicating, but they're weak in action. Men rule the action world. The secret, then, is asking them to do things. This is their weak spot. They would rather talk all day and discuss things. They're experts in that. But you can't win at this unless you're the expert. And you are in doing things. Asking for a date is your ultimate test. If a girl is interested, she'll enter her weak area for you. She'll do things. She'll let you lead her in the action world. Women whose interest in you is low or medium will hesitate and think about it. Signs are forms of communicating, and that's where women rule. Asking for a date is really saying, let's do some action things. You're seeing if she'll leave her dominant world of communication for you. You're under the impression that nines and tens will do that, but most won't. It's not a reversible process, because ugly girls do that. 
beautiful ones won't. The good-looking ones hide their true feelings. You must ask out the ones who reveal very few signs if she's someone you really want. Risk is part of the game. No risk, no reward. Chapter 5 Women and Information Ego Makes the Nice Guy Where did you learn all this information, Auntie Dump? The communication strategy is my own, but it is based on the book Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus by Dr. John Gray. This book is the best book ever written about relationships. Don't get married without reading it. But it is a very dangerous book if you apply it to dating. Do not, repeat, do not apply it to dating. Why? Because you'll be manipulated and used. This book can work only if you have married a highly interested woman, like his wife, Bonnie. Suppose you marry a woman who doesn't love you. Happens all the time. All the giving will be one-sided on your part. She'll make excuses why she doesn't want to make love to you. By the rules of the book, you have to accept her feelings and cannot invalidate them. It's as if you've taken a criminal into your house, but you can't call the police when she robs you. You accept a woman's negative feelings only if she really loves you. You'll be like other fools. You'll have to be understanding, even about her insulting you. But you're a smart man, aren't you? I know you get this. This book presupposes high interest, but Dr. Gray doesn't say that in his book. Very dangerous. About your other comments, know this. There are many signs a woman gives. I have seen some of those shows on the Learning Channel. They're great, as in one particular episode when they showed a tape of how some women look at a guy's shoes when they first meet. I don't doubt you're judged by some women by your shoes, as a matter of fact, I always make sure, after watching that show, my shoes are new when going out. So I am not against such signs. The greatest lesson you'll ever learn as a Don Juan is this. You must stop understanding women and start choosing the ones who work with you, not against you. The Mars and Venus book doesn't tell you that it's not necessary to understand a woman, not at all necessary, when she's highly interested in you. She'll automatically do everything right. An interesting comment by forum commenter Peak. Very true, Andy Dump. However, I recommend that men also master their skills of communication. Yes, guys, practice your writing and verbal skills. That means writing essays well or at school or university. This is powerful because if you're stronger than she is at her strongest point, then she'll truly revere you. Once she realizes in her mind you're better than she is, then she can submit to you. She'll test you on it initially, then she'll simply want you. Why? Because they'll feel weak and vulnerable, but with you around, she feels protected. On another thread, Auntie Dumb says, He made only one mistake. He took her number. I keep trying to tell you guys, when a woman initiates a date or relationship, she's not very serious. Women have a million reasons to ask you out. Very few are for romantic purposes. This guy blamed himself. That's a shame. The girl had low interest from the start. Him getting the number the easy way should have alerted him not to take her seriously. You guys have to keep your egos in place. You think you must be fantastic for her to give you her number. It proves you don't know women. When a guy is fantastic, most women are too afraid to make a move. They make their moves on guys that are not emotionally overpowering. If a woman thinks you're out of her league or superior to her, she won't ask you out. I want to add in that just because a woman has sex with you or even marries you, does not mean she likes you. Look, why do you remain a nice guy when all reality revealed to you the obvious fact that you were a fool? Because of your ego. Why do you continue the same error? Your ego. The man who is invincible with women is the man who can humble himself. 
for women do not deceive men. Rather, women help men deceive themselves. Women and Information Why do guys feel they must hand out information? With the first date or meeting with a girl, they flap their gums as if they were trying to sell themselves. What these guys don't realize is that they are sending out information all the time, by how they walk, how they talk, what they wear, and how they act. These things women notice. Women want to find out information. That is what they do when they meet a guy. They'll already be analyzing your actions. There's no need to sell yourself with words. You tell a woman only what you want told. It's best to give her, even if you're getting married, only the tiniest information about your past. I personally believe that whatever transpired before you met your girlfriend is none of her business. If she asks why your relationship didn't work out, tell her, I don't know. So she'll carry no remaining curiosity there. If she asks how many girlfriends you had, tell her, I don't count them. The trick here is to give her a manly answer. Don't give her nerd answers. She doesn't know you're a sharp fellow. You give her dumb answers. You play dumb. Don't worry, she'll buy them. Why did you get divorced? I don't know. It just happened. Surely there must be some reason. I'm not a psychologist, Tiffany. Who knows? No details are the way you do it. Women don't see men as thinkers, so your vague answers will be accepted. If she's looking for another Einstein or college professor, get rid of her. Who wants to talk about DNA during a relationship anyway? Simple, vague answers. Nice guys, as I used to be one myself, think they must confess. Never tell a woman anything negative about any past girlfriends. What do you dislike women doing to you most? Cancelling dates. No, seriously, what's your pet peeve about women? And here you grab her and kiss her and say, Ladies asking too many questions. When women ask me why I got divorced, I usually tell them I was very young and naive, and then I change the subject. You must practice this art of telling only a little, but never lie. Oh, yes, I also tell them I really don't remember. Now, a lot of you won't like what I'm going to say here, but remember this. Concealing is not lying. The truth is always there. If she really wants to know about your past marriage, she can simply go talk to your ex-wife. Pray tell us, Auntie Dump, why else should you not give away information? The fact is, women are ruthless with information they get from you and absolutely cannot be objective at least not for the first few months or so. The fact is, she'll misinterpret what you say and come to false conclusions about the personal details you give her. Go on a first date with a woman and tell her you were reading a book about the satanic church because you were just curious about it? Hmm. She's not going to see it that way, that you are merely curious. Everything you say after that will be distorted in her mind. The longer your relationship with a woman, the more you may share yourself. But you don't sit there stone-faced. You talk about her. You shouldn't be talking or getting personal during the first couple of dates. See if she's ready on time. See if she's eager for additional dates. See if she likes your date ideas first. Maybe she prefers another guy. Let her go with him. But if she sticks around with you being tight-lipped, then you know you have a winner. Information in the beginning turns a woman off. Action dates, swimming, bowling, etc. turn her on. Chapter 6. Three Words to Change Your Life Speak, Auntie Dump! The perfect Don Juan asks for a girl's phone number when he first meets or sees her, not one month later. He always asks for her home phone number. If he doesn't get it, he walks away. A Don Juan always waits four or more days before calling a girl. She must wait. A Don Juan never arranges a date face to face with a girl. He always calls first. She must wait and wonder about him. 
He sees a girl only once a week for the first three weeks. He has to clear his dates with other women or pretend he is busy with them. If she wants more, he says he is busy. Don Juan never gives flowers, cards or gifts for the first two months. Her birthday is the only exception. He never talks over one hour with a woman on the phone, ever. Twenty minutes at most. He avoids contact with her, with emails and messages, etc., between dates. He calls once to arrange the next date. During the first three months, he tells her nothing about himself. She has to ask. When asked, he only gives infinitesimal pieces. He waits for her to say, I love you, first. Then he knows she really means it. A Don Juan never says I love you before two months, ever. A Don Juan never proposes before six months. He prefers to wait at least one year. All her minor flaws must be seen. A Don Juan never lives with a woman. He is a free man. He will marry the best after he meets her. A Don Juan only focuses on the romantic side of a woman. He knows long talks lead to friendship, not love. He knows being a mystery fascinates her and makes her wonder and want him. And lastly, a true Don Juan makes sure the relationship is 50-50. Half the time she's doing what he wants to do. He feels this in his stomach, not his head. In fact, the man is proud of his own accomplishments. But it also means you can't brag. Guess what? Women love that. What kind of car do you have? It's foreign, darling. Who makes it? It's a two-door. Well, what's the darn name? Oh, all right. You sure ask a lot of questions. It's a Porsche. Oh. How else does a guy weed out uninterested chicks? When I ask a girl for her number, I know instantly right then if she's interested. When you give a girl your number, you'll be waiting around for days or weeks to find out if she's interested. Why on earth would you want to wait around for a call? I find out right away. I've never given out my number, but research I have done says this. Very, very few women call you back this way. Why would you wait and see if she's interested when you could find out instantly? If you give a girl your number, you're waiting for her answer. You're only fooling yourself by saying you don't care if she calls. That's not true. That is a passive approach anyway. Women prefer the direct approach. Even if a guy is confident, the woman will see you as passive and afraid to ask for her number. Very few men say, what's your number? Right out like that. That's what they like. That's a turn on. Not, call me honey. That way a woman thinks she isn't very attractive. Female forum commenter Dizgull said she would forget about a guy if he waited seven days to call her. Most women only give out their home phone numbers to the guys that are very interesting to them. They will remember you, so don't believe her. However, some women do give out dozens of phone numbers and forget the names of the guys that called. Here's what you do. Hello, this is Auntie Dump. Auntie Dump who? Sorry, I must have the wrong number. Click. If she forgets, hang up and move on. The purpose of the above guidelines is not to get jerked around. Only a woman that is really interested in you will go out with you. You hope they forget. You want them to forget. That shows low interest. Better to get yourself out early than to have her cheat later on in the relationship. If you follow the above, some good ones may get away, but you'll almost never get burned. But what if the girl gives you a fake number? What about the fake number? Does that mean the number is unreliable for interest? No. You never ask a woman for her number if you spend more than 30 minutes talking to her. The shorter time, the better. The guys that get fake numbers are pests who hang around too long. She doesn't have to know you at all for you to ask for her number. The date is where she learns about you and judges you. You talk for just a little while and then ask. 
Then you leave wherever you may be. You are a man of mystery, not a big mouth and a pest. Now, to whom do you apply Anti-Dump's machine? When you find that awesome girl, do you just disregard it? Never give an inch. It doesn't matter if she's 18 or 80. It doesn't matter if she's Miss America or merely a one. You put all women through the same dating tactics. It doesn't matter if she likes rock climbing or is in a wheelchair. It doesn't matter if she's from Brazil or Canada. You still make them wait five days before you call. You don't buy them gifts. You keep your personal information to yourself. You don't go north with one girl and then south with another. You don't go up with this one and then go down with that one. In the U.S. Army, all recruits are different as night and day, but the Army, in basic training, makes them all climb every obstacle in their path. Nothing's changed for an individual. They either make it or they drop out. You follow the same procedure time and time again with all women. This will almost guarantee you success in finding an interested woman because it is like having a love machine. You just push a button and there she is. Well, there's more work than that, but you get the picture. You're now on the road to the one. But most guys get hung up on other things than closing. Remember three little words. Forget crazy pickup lines. Forget fancy approaches. Forget massive confidence. Forget cool clothes. Forget her confusing glances. And forget two-hour conversations. Turn your life around by asking her, What's your number? Forget colognes. Forget the lay guide. Forget Ross Jeffries. Forget negging. Forget hair gel. Forget fast cars. Turn your life round by asking her, What's your number? Forget anti-dump. Forget pook. Forget alpha males. Forget so suave dot com. Forget dating books. Forget destiny. Turn your life around by asking her, What's your number? Total happiness is waiting for you, but you must say the three little words to her. First introduce yourself, then a little talking, then what's your number? Then go home, mission accomplished. We are not women. We need to stop acting like flowers and stop focusing on attraction. You don't have to hang yourself like a damned fool. After you're with a woman over five years, then you can tell her anything you want. I served five to ten for armed robbery. Is that because your father was sick and almost lost his house? Yes. I wanted you to see the real me first. I'm sorry, but I didn't want to lose you. You've kept me on the straight and narrow. I love you. Ha-ha! <laughs> Another reason why the girl at the end loves her armed robbery husband, because he said, You have kept me on the straight and narrow. He boosted her perception of her femininity. One way is to make sure you talk to her in person most of the time. Keep phone talk under an hour. Rarely talk on the phone. She has to see you in person, or she'll be without you. If you limit the phone and stop email and limit messages, she'll want you more. Her interest will rise or stay high. She'll wonder where you are and what you're doing. Another way is to not give her any flowers, cards or gifts for the first two months, but you must kiss her and show affection at the same time. This will cause her to wonder about you. You're loving, yet buy nothing. Most guys give gifts and flowers, She'll be very curious about this. She'll think your love is genuine because you're not trying to buy her love. But the main thing is to tell her nothing about yourself. If she asks a personal question, just answer very vaguely. Use one-word answers. This is only about you. Don't talk like that. What do you like to do? Oh, lots of things. What do you think about girls who wear tight clothes? Sometimes I look, sometimes I don't. Then ask her questions back to take the focus off you. 
don't just tell her too much about your personal point of view too soon. Have fun for the first two months. If she's still round in eight weeks, then you can share more about yourself. The whole idea is that she should just like to be with you, regardless of your opinions. She should like your style, not your feelings, in the first two months. Your feelings are none of her business until she shows she likes your style first. I always wondered, shouldn't I tell the good things about myself? But Auntie Dump, of course, is correct. This is a machine for weeding out girls. It is basically like an auction. Ladies, a position for Pook Wife has just opened. Now, I can't just grab any chick to fill in for Pook Wife. She must be the right chick. A Pookish chick. So I go about my life, and when a girl catches my eye, the filtering begins. She knows what I want. They always know. Interested girls will give me their number and go out with me. Now, on the date, I do not go about telling her about Pook, even if our time together is sensationally good. Why? Because I am the object of focus. I basically interview her. Sure, you could say things back to her in a conversation way. But you want to know something about women? They love mystery. And you know what? They love figuring you out. They love peeling away the layers of yourself, seeing what jewels are inside. Yes, you could tell her about your good points, and her interest level might go up a few, but if she finds the good stuff on her own, then the good points go up a quadzillion times. But, Pook, whatever do you mean by this? Women like to find great guys. They love diamonds in the rough. They scrub off that rough exterior to find pure treasure. She is overwhelmed, and this is when she usually falls in love with you. Now, compare that to the shiny diamond. Well, the shiny diamond guy is great and all, but there's no mystery, no sense of discovery. The diamond guy is ruining her feminine mission. Thus, he becomes boring. This is why, when you're great and know it, you let the women find out. Oh, they will find out. Think of a really hot guy. Does the really hot guy go around saying, Hi, I'm really hot? No, women hate guys like that. Women have a finer eye than men do. They'll notice your good points, and there's no need to declare them. Chapter 7. Become a Mystery Check this out. You try to disclose as little information about yourself as possible. You do this by giving general and vague answers. Short and sweet. Then you turn the conversation back round to her. Do first dates make you nervous? Only once in a great while. How about you? What kind of a degree do you have? A hard-earned one. And you? Did you go to college? You're vague only about personal information, but you still carry a conversation and talk all you want to. Talk all night, just not about you. You should act as if you're on America's Most Wanted. If you tell her too much, she'll run. The less they know, the more they want to know. The secret is to talk about physical objects and stay away from subjective topics. Talk about music, food, anything but you. Generalizing becomes very important. The woman will already be analyzing your behavior, your tone, your clothes and such. What law is there that says you must give the woman the details she wants? Just generalize all answers about you. What was the best experience of your life? It was a trip to Africa. It was fun. And you? Tell me about Africa. One night I almost got eaten by a lion. Note, however, only to tell the stories that are true. Notice how my answers were about things and not about ideas and feelings. That gets you into trouble. Ideally, a woman shouldn't know much about how you feel about things. 
This makes them very curious about you. If she asks, what do you do? Always go for the general term. I'm in computers. And you? What do you do? Where do you live in Houston? On the south side. So didn't Auntie Dump suggest action dates at the beginning? I really said the conversation about you kills the mystery. But too much conversation usually leads to too much personal disclosure. Hence the action dates. They are your insurance against your big mouth. Once they know about you, they get bored. You must reveal yourself slowly over many dates for as long as possible. Years, even. Some guys are going to have problems with this. The point is your mate isn't supposed to be Oprah. You're not going to tell her about your entire life. Let her find out on her own, because then she'll be genuinely curious. Auntie Dump kept emphasizing you should talk about things, not feelings. Like I said above, talk about anything you see and do on dates. Look at the size of that guy. I've never seen a seven-footer before. Isn't that different? People try to be so serious so soon. Keep it light and fun. You really shouldn't be getting so personal early on. You should be watching to see if she cancels dates. Do you feel right with her? Is she rude to others when she can't have her way? Does she have a temper? I suggest staying on the surface for a few dates. You may hate the way she orders food. Why find out her disappointments in life if it turns out you hate the way she talks? On one of my dates, this great-looking woman my age seemed to be talking funny. I didn't notice that in the club when we met. You create a mystery when you know more about her than she knows about you. Women claim they want to know everything about you. But if they find out too soon, they leave. It's their curiosity that drives them toward love. Be like a miniseries on TV. Don't let them ever know the ending. Flirting and creating interest. On the internet, some males advocate male flirting. However, they don't call it flirting. They call it creating interest. They even think they are controlling the girl by doing this. Girls also believe they don't exactly flirt. They just create interest, and many of them think they control the guy. We know they're wrong. So why is there so much hostility about guys running around trying to create interest? It's because it shatters the women's sense of control. With seduction, to become a physical dildo to her, you must become her emotional dildo. After all, she has no true interest in you. This is the Ross Jeffries way. Listen to what Auntie Dumb says on flirting or creating interest. Flirting was invented by women as an attention-seeking device. Society tells a woman that it is improper to ask a man out, so women flirt to get your attention to let you know non-verbally of their romantic interest in you. It isn't necessary for a man to flirt. He doesn't have to telegraph his romantic interest. That's because he does the asking out. Men are confused in this area. Flirting is for women. You telegraph your romantic interest in a woman by asking for her home phone number. That is the male flirting, so to speak. Auntie Dump was one that didn't believe in Kino. There's a post by me in the Hall of Fame at SoSuave.com about Kino. Now, I never do Kino at first. Kino is perfect for the nice guy because it turns him into a sexual being. But it is bad for Puck now because women already see Puck as a sexual being. By Kinoing them now, I just display way too much interest, which girls will almost take as desperation. This sexiest sin guy had to touch me. I've got him. When you ask for the number, she'll automatically know you're interested in her romantically. If you don't ask, you're in danger of falling into the friend zone. That's because you didn't flirt by asking for the number. You didn't let her know your true feelings to ask her out. 
So just have a simple, lively, non-flirtatious conversation and then ask the girl for the number as soon as possible. The same applies as far as dates go. Each call for a date telegraphs to her that you're very interested. Or else, why would you ask her out? Because you're very interested. You don't just put it into words. At the end of each date, I usually say something like, I had a great time jet skiing. I look directly into her eyes. She knows you're talking about her. You give indirect indicators of you liking her. You kiss her passionately, and at times you hold her passionately. Never tell her how you feel in words during the first two months. Try waiting until the third month. That would be much, much better. You never try to create romantic interest. Big mistake. She has to already be interested. You don't have to impress her. She should already be impressed by you. Or why else did she accept the date? Not to kill a boring night, I hope. You don't create interest. It has to already be there. Or you drop her and start again. When a man flirts, it works against him. He's telegraphing too much romantic interest. Much too much. At workplaces and classes, there are many guys that flirt round. Why? Because it's risk-free. They do not get shot down, and every woman loves having a guy flirt with her. It gives her attention. When I'm interested in a girl, I ask her out. This creates a response in her that you'll never get only by flirting. If you flirt hard enough, she thinks you're going to ask her out. But when you don't, watch out, because she'll despise you. Most guys here are making it harder than it actually is. You do not have to become some mythical alpha male. You don't need to play psychological chess with them. You don't have to have society in awe of you. You just have to simply go ask them out. Instead of facing this simple fact, we spit out and regurgitate alpha male manifestos, treatises on women and society and so on. The challenge is not you versus the woman. It is not you versus the world. It is always you versus you. The only roadblock to make your dreams become real is within you. Correct yourself and the world gets corrected. Chapter 8. Approaching Women This differs for everyone, and here is how Antidump did it. I always approach women by giving unsolicited advice. Ever have someone make a comment and you didn't ask for advice? Annoying, isn't it? But it works with women. The advice must be positive and that you're supporting the woman's choice. Suppose she's looking at her coat. I would approach and say, that coat definitely will keep you warm this winter. And she would then turn and look at me and make a comment back. And then you ask for her name. You're not saying, that looks good on you. It's not flattery. It has to be practical advice, like a better shoe polish. An hour ago, a woman in a supermarket parking lot was loading groceries into her trunk as I was walking past. She was starting to reach under the car to get to the groceries. I almost said, yeah, don't forget those. Did you ever forget stuff under there? What a pain, eh? What's your name? Give positive advice that helps the woman. It must be real and sincere. Sometimes you should take the red bus, you know. It'll get you to London half an hour faster. What's your name? Excuse me, you should definitely put some air in that tire. You'll get a flat soon. What's your name? Asking for her name will signal that you're in romantic mode. She has to know your intentions. Then she'll either talk or reject you. Low interest. The best places to use this are at social gatherings or fairs and events. Anywhere there are lots of people. My examples are for the street only to show you they can be done anywhere if necessary. I gave you the hardest places. Then you ask for her home phone number. The actual conversation you carry on before the number is something you have to invent yourself. I can't tell you how to do that. It has to fit your style. The first date should be fun or an action date. I say, let's do comedy. It's not action, but it's certainly fun. And the idea is not to have discussions. Swimming is good in the summer. 
I have a rowboat. Hey, Ginger, let's take my boat out Saturday. I'll bring it by at four. Miss Perfect, let's rent a boat on Saturday. I'll come over at one. She doesn't want to be bored by your stupid ideas. You know what I mean. Bore her after she falls in love with you. Talk about things you see. Oh, look at the size of that dog! Or, come on, I want to buy my little brother a balloon. But it has to be the truth. Never lie. The next three dates should be like bowling, miniature golf, indoor rock climbing, fencing, etc. After the date, take her right home. Do it smoothly and like you're still interested in her. No kiss on the first date. You only kiss her if you think she had a bad time with you. It's a test. Sometimes she may look as if she had a bad time, but didn't. So you kiss her to see if she pulls away or gives you her cheek to kiss. If she had a great time, never kiss her. It makes her hope you'll kiss her next time. Or she has to give you a second date to get one. Never discuss the second date with her. Always call. Never discuss the first date. Never say things like, Let's get together sometime. Want to go to dinner? No. Ask for the number, then tell her what the date is when you call. And about sex, I always go as long as I can stand it. The longer, the better. I want them to want it when I make my move. This is true. One woman pushed me into her bedroom and knocked me down on her bed. She couldn't stand the weight. Another woman snarled, Are we going to do it or what? It's great when they want it. You look for the signs. I use heavy touching for about a month. Then they let you know when they're ready. All women must give me an HIV test result. No exceptions. As you can see, there's no sexual harassment here. None of my advice forces a woman to do anything she doesn't want to do. If I don't get her home phone number, I walk away. And so should you. This is Auntie Dump's machine in a nutshell. I like how Auntie Dump does not give them the kiss or the sex. This definitely drives them nuts. No flowers, cards, or gifts for about three months. The fun times will make up for that. The nice guy routine is over. After she tells you she loves you, then buy her some flowers. But don't overdo it. Forum commenter DZ asks about the first date. Auntie Dump responds. Just do the stuff that doesn't cost anything. Say you live in Canada. Wanda, let's go ice skating on Friday. I'll be over to get you at 7 p.m. I'm sure there are free or two-dollar ice rinks you could go to. Yes, I know it's summer. What about swimming? What about volleyball? Let's play volleyball. I'll be over at... Then you tell her. Okay, these are probably not cool things to do, but I warned you I am older. Boy, am I older than you. Find cool things to do. Any hip-hop bands that give free concerts in your area? Let's go see Eminem. He's doing a free benefit in Toronto. My parents will drive us. Let's meet for coffee. And you tell her everything she hates. So I like Eminem. He's cool. How could you like a disgusting person like that? That's what you like? I'm out of here. But don't women like men who are creative? Shouldn't we do what women want? Whenever you hear yourself saying, women like creativity, or women like this or that, stick your finger in a light socket. You have it reversed. You should be saying, I like skiing, do you? I like bowling, do you? Don't give a girl what she wants. You find a girl that likes what you want. Later on, you ask her what she likes after she accepts you first. Never cook dinner for a woman unless you're engaged to be married and the ring is on her finger. She has to be taken out of circulation. Imagine doing that and next week you see her with Stan the Man. Use your creative mind to find ways for the girls to like what you want. Otherwise, you're building a road to dump zone hell. I hope I haven't ruffled your feathers. I used to do all that stuff, buddy. Here's a tip. Women don't give a damn about all that. All they want is a guy they can count on when their car breaks down on a dark road. Or a guy that will listen and not talk 
when disaster strikes their life. A man of action, a rock, a man that can be there. Think about it. Now I'm going to quote commenter Vasago. He will be infuriated that I am quoting him in this anti-dump thread, which is reason enough to do so. You want to know the truth? That player has a better chance of finding a long-term relationship. He meet more women. He got more options to choose from. He got more game, so he can get the one he want. And most importantly, he don't come from a place of need. I know when I was hooking up with a lot of these, these women, I always had long-term relationship options with them. But when I done decided to settle down and find someone special, everything seemed to dry out. I met all my past women's at a time when the last thing on my mind was finding a real woman. Women smell that neediness a mile away. They bloodhounds. And that is the biggest factor. Of course, there's also that, what you call it, a uh, social proof, that challenge of taming the alpha male, that bad boy. They got that primal attraction to them thugs. All that adds to the attraction. But at the same time, you don't go over the edge and come too much of that male hoe. That gonna come back haunt you. I notice the men who get the highest quality women's are those that really can't box them in. You can't put them in a category. Guys with that one woman all the time, but that one changes every couple of months until you find out one he connect with. They always be treating these women well, but they don't take nothing. They don't settle for nothing, only the best. These are real players. You never know by talking to them, but you're going to hear them hosts talking. Ooh, shit. They talking all kind of business because they dying to be next in line. This fits perfectly with Auntie Dumb's machine. You first need to figure out what you want and not come at a girl from a position of need. A guy who puts every facet of his life into chasing sex is pathetic. But the guy going through chicks to find the one he wants, that is the way. I don't consider that to be a player, but if it is, then I'm certainly a player. Improving yourself makes everything easier, but you still have to be social and go out and meet all the chicks. They want to meet you, so give them that opportunity. The seduction material is only good to get you outside, since that's where the girls are, and blasting away our old social barriers. It's very limited and shouldn't be taken seriously, or worse, taken as a life philosophy. The good of the pickup craftsman is how he can meet many chicks. This is foreign commenter Vasago's point, but this is also a core element of Anti Dump's machine. You'll probably go through as many or even more than a pickup artist. The difference is the PUA is trying to sex the girl while the machine is trying to see if she fits into your world. That is a huge difference. Chapter 9. Always Be Prepared I started out as a super nerd. I'm more of a thinky person, so social things take a bit more effort out of me. But if you want to succeed, you always need a plan. Always take the opportunity. Always have fun things to do, so you don't have to plan them after you meet the girl. Always carry paper and pencil to write down phone numbers or put it into your cell phone. This will remind you to get numbers, to get dates. But what if the woman thinks you're too prepared? There's no such thing as being too prepared when it comes to women. This will be seen as a plus, as Anti Dump explains. You want to look prepared. You are silently telling her you ask girls for numbers. Women are not men. They don't think as we do. Women only want a guy when other girls want him. They want a guy who is in demand. They are not jealous of other girls. She'll assume you're successful. If you weren't, you wouldn't be carrying it. They know men don't do things for nothing. Women who know you might be seeing others are less likely to play games. If they like you, women are afraid to risk losing you. They know if they say, I'm busy, too many times, you'll call someone else. Only two types of women will not like you carrying a pencil for numbers. The first type is the deeply insecure woman with emotional problems. She cannot stand the thought of competing with other women. 
The other is the control freak or manipulative woman. This is the kind who wants to have it all her way. She is a 90-10 taker in the relationship, stubborn and inflexible. Normal women will be surprised, delighted. Since most guys are not prepared, she'll wonder what other things you're good at. Mm. But Mr. Antidump, is the number asking too much? Isn't that giving the woman all the power? Isn't she now in control? This is why nice guys give up their 50% in the relationship. The guy is in control. The guy asks for the number. If he doesn't ask, nothing happens. That's control. The guy keeps her waiting with her not knowing if he will call, ever. Then when he asks her, let's do dinner, the date itself is his idea. The person taking action is the one in control. If she doesn't seem interested, he drops her. Many men aren't aggressive in relationships because they erroneously think the woman does the choosing. It is not just asking for the number. It is taking action. Never doubt this. You are always in control when you take action. Chapter 10. The What Ifs The Undateables What if there are women who are in love with you but are undateable? One in ten women you will meet will be undateable. This doesn't happen that often, but you should watch out for this kind of woman. This is a woman who shows all kinds of interest in you, calls you, does a lot of kino on you, she's very happy to see you, etc. You know in your gut that she's not a friend, and that you're definitely not in the friend zone. You just know she thinks you're great and is highly interested. But somehow, she always has a valid excuse for not giving you a date. A real live valid reason. She's genuinely busy with her daughter and family, a flight to Florida for vacation, or she's a doctor with an impossible schedule, or she's involved with many social activities, or maybe she's extremely shy, or thinks you're too good for her, but she still shows up and gives you a warm greeting. But, like I said, you're not getting a date, or the dating is irregular and random. One more example here. Her gym night is on Saturday night, your favorite night to go out. So she asks for another night to date you. Remember, she really likes you and she's a ten. But you don't want to go out on another night. Saturday night is date night for most people, so you're not in the wrong here. These women, although they have high interest, are undateable. It kills you to drop them, but you must. We men have never had it our way, and it certainly is difficult to dump this kind of interested woman. But you've got to have it your way. Like Burger King, hold the pickles and the lettuce, lady. If you want to be happy, you have to dump them early on. And I mean quickly. If you like a crazy dating pattern, more power to you. But don't hesitate to get rid of a woman like the above. You're not being selfish. It's your damn life, and you live the way you as a man see fit. Right or wrong, it's got to be your way because you'll never be happy any way else. Too shy. But Auntie Dump, so wonderful and wise, what if the girl is actually interested, giving all the signs of interest, but is too shy to date? Oh yes, this happens all the time. An extremely shy girl is crazy about you, but she puts off giving you a date. Or she's a girl that uses speech in the wrong way. She means something else when she talks, and you misinterpret her. The answer is simple. She loses you. My approach is based on what the majority of women do. Most women use words correctly. Most women are not shy. They are average. There are always women who are exceptional, but you never make an exception. This keeps the users heartbreakers, cheaters, and psychos out of your life. Not bad, right? Of course, you'll be wrong sometimes, but you'll gain the advantage of less pain and more money in your pockets. Face it, women are very picky, but now it's our turn. Indeed. The Strategist 
But what if the woman is using strategies of her own? What if she read in the girly magazines to pretend to be disinterested? If a woman is using the rules, which is a dating book from the early 90s, or playing hard to get, or is following any kind of planned strategy, she loses. The reason is simple. For a strategy to work, one of the sexes can't be using a strategy. Again, for your strategy to work, she can't be using a strategy. One side must be defenseless for the strategy side to win. A man who's a nice guy will call a woman repeatedly because in the book The Rules, she won't return a man's calls. In other words, the guy has to beg for a date. Real men don't beg. Begging is impossible with my strategy because of the two-call limit. You're not defenseless. If the male and the female are both using a strategy, like in chess, you have a stalemate. No one wins the game and both of you lose. The answer is simple. Date only women who have no plan. And here's the great part. Women dislike strategies. As soon as they meet a guy who they have high interest in, they are the first to break their own rules. This is why you should never make an exception. The woman must be the first to compromise. A little. But, Auntie Dump, is not your machine going too far? Your machine assumes the woman knows what she is doing and is executing her plan against you. What if this is not the case? Your heart must still be protected. I feel, and this is my opinion now, that it's better to be wrong about someone than to get hurt repeatedly over and over. Judges sometimes send innocent people to jail for life. It happens. And in love, you must be a little ruthless, hard, unforgiving. Being soft doesn't work. Look, you don't have to use any of this material. Just keep it as a backup for when women begin to make you miserable. That's all I ask. Like karate, you aren't defenseless now. Chapter 11. After the Dates After the First Date But, Auntie Dump, under what guidelines does your machine operate after the first date? Oh, hello, Pook. You asked, what are the guidelines after the first date? For the first two months, you end the first date and all subsequent ones in the same way. You don't talk about the next date. You call for it. Just like when you ask for the number, you don't mention any date. The reason you refrain from talking about the next date is because you don't need one. You are not needy. Women love a man who can live without sex. In reality, there's no such thing, but in a woman's head, there is. You may need sex badly, but when you leave her and don't mention a date, she thinks you're one cool dude. You say something like, I really enjoyed the roller skating tonight. We'll talk soon. Never say, I'll call you. They must feel that you might not call at all. Predictable guys get washed away. If the women aren't worried you might not call, they are not interested. That's a fact. You always wait two or three days to call for the next date. Never the next day. That's a guy that has no self-control. Real men are busy and don't have the time for silly romance. Now, I love romance, but I keep it hidden away, inside until a woman has shown that she's going to stick around. Only interested women get your romantic moves. When? After two months. Most new relationships end by eight weeks. If she's still round after two months, then you relax the rules a little. You can tell her you'll call her, etc. You can see a girl more than once a week after a month, but make sure she's really interested and not trying to use you just for dates. Try to see a girl once a week for the first three weeks. Suppose a girl calls you during the third week of dating and asks to see you for a date. That's okay, because she can't be away from you. She wants you. Just don't be too available within the first month. It's all a test of interest. You see, Pook, you aren't supposed to be making it all work. She has to be doing that by saying yes to your dates. She has to do all the work. The shoe is on the other foot now. The woman has to do everything right now, or there will be no relationship. 
You have taken control over your life. You're not at the mercy of women any longer. Many women will flunk this test. Always remember, Pook, they flunk because they're not good enough for you. This is how you protect your heart. But, Andy Dump, what do you say when the girl says the three words, I love you? I would just say, that's wonderful, and then kiss her. If asked how I felt, I would say, keep going with me and find out. She'll be cross, but will be dying to find out. Never tell a woman how you feel within the first two months, no matter even if she says how she feels. Most new relationships break up within eight weeks. You must see if she'll be around after the second month. Remember, you may want to dump her before eight weeks. You can't say I love you, then break up with her when you discover something you don't want. Wait and be sure. After the two-month mark. The girl needs to follow your date ideas for the first couple of months. After that, things change with Andy Dump's machine. Here is something he said that I thought was surprising. Ask her what she wants to do for the next date. You're past the point where you're watching to see if she goes along with your ideas. She has passed the test. You know she's flexible. Now you can start being mutual. Don't worry, she'll not change. About once a month, ask her if there's anything she wants to do. Here's a secret. Whatever she wants to do, no matter how much you hate it, say yes. If you get choosy, she'll not give you any more ideas. She'll resent you and hold it inside. Not ideal. Women are not men. If you ask, you're stuck with the choice. But she'll love you for it. Make yourself like it and smile. This is a relationship, not a one-way street. During the first month, you have to be strict. You want to find the right girl. After two months, you relax your rules a little. Never ask to be exclusive. Why would you do that? She's winning you, right? Becoming exclusive with a woman means both of you talk about not dating or seeing anyone else. The dating with others comes to a close. Never ask a woman to become exclusive. She must ask you. She must talk about it first. Why? If a woman hasn't asked you yet, it means she's still open to seeing others. She still has doubts about you. Highly interested women don't want you going out with other women. A woman asking for your exclusivity is like a marriage proposal. She's cementing and laying the foundations for true intimacy. She wants something that's lasting. It is the ultimate test of interest, guys. She's proposing. If you ask first, you'll never know her true interest level. Why didn't she bring it up? How come she's still letting you see others? Why isn't she closing her options? Is she seeing someone else? Think about it. But, Auntie Dump, what if the guy already asked the exclusive question? Did she say, I was wondering about that too? Or, I'm glad you brought this up? I used to mention it first myself. One girl said that she wanted to know that. Did she act relieved? Did she act like you've just defused a bomb? A woman can like a guy a rather small amount and agree. Relationships are built on action, not words. She has to ask. Then you know for sure. Good luck next time. Just keep it in the back of your mind. The Don Juan Pledge of Honor Notice how Andy Dump's focus is not sex and not just getting the girl. His focus is on an interested chick. Gentlemen, let us say this together. The Don Juan Pledge of Honor I am a Don Juan. I promise on my honor I will never call a girl within less than four days. I assure my fellow Don Juans I will always faithfully ask for the number and will never walk away from a girl without it. I will always be loyal to the law of interest. I will make sure she's really interested. She'll give me a decisive yes when I ask her out. I will accept no less from her. I promise with the greatest sincerity I will never go back to an ex, no matter how much she begs. 
I will take full responsibility for getting myself into the friend zone because I talked too much on the phone and waited seven months to ask her out. I pledge never to reveal the true me for the first two months and to give her only bits and pieces about myself. The law of mystery forbids it. I am a Don Juan. I do not stay in bad relationships. I do not date women who give me a lot of trouble. I am a Don Juan, and that is why I am happy. Gentlemen, this concludes this series on Anti-Dumps Machine. There are many posts here, and most are written by high schoolers or guys in college. Anti-Dump came from a divorced marriage. His machine is not to lead you to sex, not to lead you to a token girl so you can make your friends jealous by saying, I have a girlfriend. I have been on this forum for many years, and Anti-Dump's machine is the only one I know of that leads to love. But remember, Anti-Dump's machine is a weeding out process. The more fuel you give the machine, the more results you will get. The more women you approach and date, the more jewels that will be filtered out. Give your woman the gift of yourself, the gift of Don Juan. If she finds out you sampled no other women but her, she'll be angry. She wants to be chosen out of many. She wants to be special. So instead of thinking, how do I get a chick? Or how do I get this chick? Think, what do I need to do in my life so that I can go through many, many chicks? No girlfriend for you until you have gone through many girls. After all, how can you know what you like about a girl if you haven't been through several of them? Anti-Dump's machine works. Now go out there and rule the chicks. Chapter 12. An Addendum I kept this last anti-dump machine post so I could keep testing out the machine and add some observations. The hardest part of this machine is that you'll lose many girls who'll be willing to make out with you and get physical. But the catch is that these girls only wanted you for that purpose anyway. As one lady friend said to me, If a girl doesn't go out with a guy again just because he doesn't kiss her on the first date, she isn't worth going out with anyway. The machine is suited for those only looking to satisfy their love, not lust. As you've noticed, Anti-Dump pushes sex far, far back in his filtering process. From my own experience, there is a good reason for this. The purpose of the machine is to find a girl who likes you for you. The problem with sex is that it confuses the women, and she thinks that you two are really bonding with sex when in fact you aren't. You can easily get a woman into a relationship with you by going heavy on the eroticism, but does she really like you or not? The machine doesn't work so well with younger girls of ages 23 and down because they're interested purely in the eroticism and making you a trophy to show to their girlfriends. Oh, you must meet all my girlfriends. One thing I might disagree with Anti-Dump is the use of dinner for an early date. Anti-Dump says, Do not have dinner. It is boring and you'll tell too much information about yourself, destroying the mystery. This is true. However, dinners with Pook are very interesting because all I talk about with her is her. When she asks me something, I'll say something and turn the conversation back to her. She tells me everything I need to know about her, her interests, her ideas on life. Auntie Dump would say, Why do I need to hear about her life if I don't like the way she acts? Most women just let things happen to them and don't have much of an idea of life. Besides, if you look on the front page of SoSuave.net, you'll find the women describing the perfect first date as dinner with the guy asking about them. The machine, I believe, has two patterns in it that must be embraced for it to be successful. The first is simple. Filter out the women and find the ones that like you. Rather than trying to fit what she wants, you find a girl that likes what you like. This topic has already been covered quite enough, however. The second, much more critical, is that the machine will sort the wheat from the chaff and deliver you quality girls. However, in order to have quality girls, you must put in quantity. 
you must kiss many frogs. How many? A lot. When you buy a car, do you get the first one you see? No, you shop around. If you buy real estate, do you go and look at only two or three? No, you look at a lot. So when you're looking for a wife or a girlfriend, why do you get lazy and go for the nearest one? One hundred, ten, three, one. This is a well-rounded number. One hundred means the number of girls you must approach and talk to. They must all be single, to your knowledge, and you must be physically interested in them. Yes, go through one hundred of them. It could be a quick conversation, or it could be you getting their numbers. The machine works best with larger numbers. The ten stands for the girls that agree to date you. The three stands for how many girls that you dated who will be buying you. And the one stands for the one you end up with. The point of this is to keep it all in perspective. Approach many girls. People think two or three is many. That is why I share with you these numbers. What should be apparent is that getting a girl is a shopping process. Auntie Dump said, You don't build a relationship, you buy one. This will also pop the bubble of many guys' concepts about love. But remember, women think like this. They go shopping for guys all along. Why shouldn't you? You do not want to marry a toad. Therefore, you need to kiss many frogs to find the girl of your dreams. She'll be the girl of your dreams because she fits you. The odds can be lessened if you consider what are the most important qualities you're looking for. Say, a particular religion, you hunt for them there. Say, a church group. One trend I see is many people hooking up with people at their jobs or someone in their classroom. This is sad. They are placing their relationship primarily by physical proximity rather than their internal selves and what both individuals want. Women tend to do this the most, and guys just react to them. This is your world now. The shoe now is on the other foot. If she doesn't treat you like a king, then you kick that princess out of Romance Kingdom. Girls always wonder who their husbands will be, who they will end up with. All the ladies are out there waiting for you to pick them. Go get them, Don Juan.